All right, so we're ready to make an initial definition of what a definite integral is. Um, now, uh, some might view this as sort of still a heuristic definition because it's not the definition that you will find in, in most textbooks. Right? A lot of textbooks will, will define the definite integral in terms of Riemann sums, which we're going to talk about in the next section. Um, but uh, the approach that we take in apex is reasonable too, that we, we make this as a definition first. Um, we define an integral in terms of area, and then later on we're going to show that that integral can be computed using Riemann sums. Uh, bo both approaches are more or less equivalent. They're just different ways of looking at it. Okay? So um, we have this idea of total signed area. right? So what do we mean here? Well, we, we might have a graph that looks something like this, right? Here's A, and maybe here's B, okay? And, well, there are sort of, you know, three distinct areas that are enclosed between the x-axis and, and the graph. There's this area here that lies above the x-axis. There's this area here that lies below. And then again, this area which lies above. Okay? And so what we're saying here, right, area that is under F and above the x-axis, meaning that, that this, this is the part where F of x is bigger than or equal to zero. And really by under F, we really mean y equals f of x. Um, and when we say above f, we really mean the graph, right? Y, uh, y equals, sorry, f of, of x. And of course, uh, to have area which is above the graph and below the x-axis, well then, then we're looking at places where f of x is less than or equal to zero. Okay? Um, so this quantity, this difference between the, the sum of the areas that lie above the x-axis and the sum of the areas that lie below, this is what we define to be the definite integral. Okay? So, so this quantity is called the definite integral. Okay. of f on this interval from a to b. Okay. And it's denoted, let's give the notation, so it's denoted by, and you'll notice the same symbol that we use for indefinite integrals, integral of f of x dx. The only difference is that we put in what are called the bounds of integration. A at the bottom, B at the top, right? So sometimes we'll talk about the lower bound and the upper bound, but these are really just the, the endpoints of the interval, right? Um, okay, so this is the definite integral of our function on, our, on the interval, right? It's just the, the difference between these two areas. Um, now, one of the reasons why you don't necessarily find this as the definition of the definite integral is, is there are some catches, right? Um, one being that just having a function which is defined on the interval, uh, it doesn't guarantee that you get something that makes sense as area under a graph, right? Um, you could have some very badly behaved functions where the function is defined everywhere from A to B. It's defined at every point on that interval. Um, but you can't make sense of the area between the x-axis and the graph of the function, right? Um, maybe there are infinite discontinuities, and we've just redefined the functions at the vertical asymptotes to make sure that they're still defined at the asymptotes. Uh, maybe you have a function which is discontinuous at every point. You have some really badly behaved function that you know, oscillates, jumps all over the place, and you can't make any sense of it, right? Um, these are things that could happen, right? And, and so maybe, maybe this quantity here doesn't even make any sense, right? Maybe that quantity is not defined. Maybe the definite integral is not actually defined, right? Um, 
We don't really have the tools, though, for a given function of just looking at it and being able to decide, oh, does area make sense in this context, right? There, this is why we have to go in and introduce some more technical details um, later on. Um, but we'll take this as our definition for now. Um, we'll see what we can get out of it. And then we'll move on to the technical stuff.